what's up everybody, how's it going? It's AJ here, I'm doing another walk around of a brand new 2021 vehicle. Um, this one's coming late in the fall. But right now, I want you guys to uh, make sure that at the end of this, you leave comments down below. Let us know if you have questions or there's something that you're wondering about this vehicle. And we're gonna go through the comments at the end, pick a winner and we'll send you some cool DT gear. Um, anyways, back to what this is. This is a 2021 brand new hot off the line Polaris Ranger XP1000 North Star Ultimate Edition. So. This coming season, Northstar has a couple of different variations. You can get it with, um, you know, either fully loaded up or not. This would be the Denali, King Ranch, or High Country. This is everything possible on a Ranger. Absolutely every option. All the cool features, all the electronics, all the gadgets. It's everything. And let me tell you, I am very impressed with this vehicle. Right away and up front, it's not a 100% new Ranger. It is kind of a kind of a facelift like I let's let's take Chevy or GMC as an example they build a new truck with a completely new platform and put new bodywork on it but then two three years afterwards they end up updating the look of it this is very similar to that however it does have some drivetrain efficiencies that have have been increased uh, namely the front end so the front drive line of this vehicle has a 30 percent stronger um, build the rear clutches are 50 percent stronger and they're giving you the number is 300 percent better belt life so that's pretty significant. Um, so they have done some driveline updates, but besides that, the actual workings of the vehicle being very similar. Same 82 horsepower, um, you know, all that stuff engine-wise is, is going to stay the same. You're still going to get your, you know, your bus bar and all that stuff under the hood so you can plug in accessories super easy with absolutely no wiring except for a click. Um, but when it comes to the mechanics of it, the suspension and the engine and all that stuff, it's all the same. So anyways, Moving forwards, one of the cool things is right up front, uh, Maxxis has some new tires on this. They're 29s that come on a really nice looking 14 inch rim. And I'll be honest, if I bought this vehicle, there's a lot of upgraded vehicles uh, that you look at and you go, well, yeah, the rims and tires are okay, but mm, I think I still need to upgrade them. This one comes with really nice stuff. Um, very similar to your King Ranch pickup truck or your Denali or your you know High Country. They come with really nice tires and rims. This is one of those packages. Up front, we've also got big old beefy bumper. 4,500 pound winch. And there's a really cool feature because when we get inside the cockpit, I'll show you, obviously this has ride command, the big seven inch touchscreen. One of the coolest things it has that I didn't even really understand, it's got a plow mode. Plow mode, okay, you're like, well, right here, it's got a front camera, it's got a back camera. I was expecting, well, you put it in reverse and it shows you the backup camera, you put it in drive and it shows you the front one just to help you out. Not at all that. You can actually tune the winch from inside the cab on the screen to raise and lower your plow to the exact height that you want it when you go from drive to reverse. So every single time it lifts the plow and then when you put it back in drive, it drops it and you can fine tune the exact height and drop that you want for your plow. I mean, that is like, that's just one of the most annoying things when you're plowing is having to run the winch constantly and do it yourself. That's such a cool feature. Like I think Polaris should have this available on all of their vehicles that have ride command. And, even ones that don't, that is such a, such a smart setup. I mean, something really, really new that nobody's done yet. And, and I really like it. It'll also allow you to backblade. So there's a feature on the screen that you can, I haven't tested it yet because we don't have a plow on it, but you can also backblade if you want. And there's a button, you just click the button and it drops the plow and will let you backblade and, and interrupts the sequence that you're normally doing. So headlights on this vehicle, so this is the ultimate package and i believe there's one other one that gets the cool headlights but these are full led headlights throw huge light i'm talking the best headlights in the business right now bar none they are amazing so if you're in a utility vehicle these are the headlights to have they're they're pretty impressive you'll notice up front there is this little thing here i was like oh maybe that's a temperature sensor i'm not sure right up front i was wondering i was like it's kind of kind of weird that it's sticking out so polaris is pretty much the first i'm, I'm pretty certain this is the first in the industry to put a windshield sprayer up on the hood, just like a car or a pickup truck. Pretty cool, it's got two nozzles, it sprays it where you want it, but no longer is it kind of up top and when you're going at high speeds, it's trying to blow it down on the windshield, but really it's only getting halfway and blowing all the rest over the hood and back up into you. Um, doesn't do that anymore, it doesn't get caught all up in the upper lip, it puts it exactly where you want it and then it flows up the windshield as you're wiping, which is the way cars and trucks do it because it's the right way. It, it's becoming so automotive, not to mention, Glass on the front, glass on the back, glass on the side. This is a full hard cab. Now, you'll say, yeah, it's great, and you know, it's got all kinds of cool features, and it's got really nice, you know, automotive style paint and bumpers and all this cool stuff. What's the price? If you're worried about price, this is not the vehicle for you because this is expensive. 
it's a North Star, so it comes with heat and AC. Um, yeah, and it's the ultimate, so it's literally the most expensive one that you can buy. It's not cheap. That's not the vehicle for you if you're looking for a price point one. The regular Ranger is still a great vehicle, but this is for somebody who is looking for that, you know, high country or king ranch type side by side with every available possible, you know, option going. So the box of the Ranger is capable of carrying a thousand pounds of payload. So that's significant. Um, cool thing is it has built in like little D-rings in the, in the floor of the box here, nice tie downs. And they're actually built into a reinforced portion of the box, which is smart because there's a lot of tie down positions in side-by-side -side boxes that if you really start reefing on, and let's, let's be honest, like a thousand pounds is a lot of weight. If you're, if you're ripping around with a thousand pounds on the back of this thing, that load is, is going to move and going to want to shift if you don't tie it down tight. So when you ratchet strap on some of those old school, you know, little, uh, little loose d-ring hooks or whatever and some of them aren't even fully welded and they're not reinforced you can pull them right out of the box of the vehicle or you can bend them um, or they just don't give you a very secure feel these are reinforced into the box of this thing which is really nice so you get a super secure super tight fit when you're putting anything in here and ratchet strapping it down on top of that you've got location for four uh, five gallon pails back here there's other manufacturers who have been doing the same thing it works good it's got a little recess at the front of the box that the front of the pail fits into and then it has just the the slightest little notch down here in the bottom of the box it's very small um, i kind of like that some other manufacturers do it with a larger recess and it's just a place for dirt and other stuff to get caught in this one doesn't it's just the smallest little recess and it seems to uh, seems to work good with a five gallon pail obviously you got tons of locations for your lock and ride player's accessories. The tailgate is now able to be sat on. You can jump up on here and you know, it'll take a decent amount of weight. It's got cup holder recesses, which is kind of cool. Um, very similar to your pickup truck. And then inside of here, the latching systems now, like they're really, they're really starting to refine the latching system on this stuff. So it's, it's a very positive, nice latch. It doesn't feel flimsy. Um, the handle to open the rear gate, if you're working this thing, you want something that's big, that's easy, that does what it's supposed to do. It's light, but it's strong, all good stuff. If you come down below, rear backup camera is mounted down and underneath so you can see everything from behind. It is really handy and when you shift it into reverse, it automatically brings up the backup camera just like your car or truck, which is kind of, uh, you know, it's a nice feature. If you're spending this kind of money, I want it to do that. Add to this, obviously two inch hitch receiver, that's standard, um, you know, every utility side-by-side -side should have that. But <clears throat> painted A-arms, both front and rear on this vehicle, just gives it a little bit of that more higher quality feel. Um, and, you know, it, it looks tidy back here. They're covering up the, uh, the exhaust pipe now with a bit of a black shield, so it looks a little nicer. Just little refinements on this vehicle that are, that are very, um, very noticeable because there's so many of them that the whole thing starts to feel a lot more refined. You know, if you're spending this kind of money, you want to know that the company isn't just pushing out bold new graphics year to year that they're actually pushing themselves forwards. And it's the same reason we trade in our pickup trucks for new ones and you know you, you get enticed to go do that every you know three, four, five years, whatever it might be, is because they're bringing something new, something better and something that appeals to you more. So I think Polaris is really doing a good job. Full LED tail lights, you can see these things from a mile away. The cab on this has been updated. The seal on these doors is crazy tight. So when you, like even just when you pop it, you can't, you can't just like half-heartedly close this door. They, they want this thing slammed shut because the seal on it is just, well, it's huge. It's, it's very, very automotive-like. They used to use kind of just a cheap rubber gasket on pretty much all utility um, side-by-sides that came with a cab. It was kind of a flimsy, not very nice. This is like straight out of the automotive world. It's very tight, fits very well, works good. And then the whole inside of the cab here, it's, it's just really refined. Like this is, you know, I'm not gonna say it's automotive because if you bought a truck that looked like this, you, you know, you'd be like, hey, what's going on? But in the world of side-by-sides, this is really nice inside. Your switches for your windshields or for your uh, power windows are, I mean, you could say that they would come right out of a car. They're very automotive. Looks nice. It's got a nice little pocket down here, you know, kind of a map storage type pocket. You can put bottles of water in there, all kinds of stuff. It's sizable. It's good. And here's something that I really like. Um, we tested, obviously, the Can-Am Defender cab, and there was certain things about that that I really like. The interior cab space on the Defender cab is huge, right? Like you get inside and the windshield's like a mile away from you and it feels big. 
The Ranger is a little smaller in that regard, but things that Polaris is doing better is finishing off the inside of their doors and also their latch systems for getting in and out. I, I, I just, I like that positive feel of a door that's closed. And then when you want to open it, that it's right there, it's easy to open and there's no kind of bendy plastic or stuff that feels kind of like, you know, three years down the road, it's going to snap off in your hands and Polaris's don't. They're a very positive feeling door uh, opening and closing system. It's just, it, it's nice and it's easy and it's where you want it. And when you open it up, it pops open. And because of that tight cab seal, with this, uh, this big rubber gasket, it, it pops open and you're like, perfect, that's what I want. I want this door to open when I hit the lever. Moving inside, um, I guess I can take my gloves off now. It's cold here in Canada. <clears throat> the inside of the cab, like I said, if you compare this to the Defender, they, they have very similar features, um, but Polaris has been doing this a bit longer and the 2021 uh, Ranger XP1000 North Star Ultimate is the ultimate it, it does take the cake this thing has an amazing interior um, super comfortable the seat is uh let me grab it the seat is fully adjustable so if you're a you know small person or you like to move forwards in it you can do just that but you can get lots of motion here underneath the seat there is a um where is it there's a storage trunk underneath the seat so it's a nice usable space it's not huge, but I mean, you know, you could drop your lunch in there if you needed to, or put a couple bottles of water or a toe strap or, you know, whatever you need. So it's a space that most side-by-sides with an adjustable, um, or utility side-by-side -side with an adjustable driver's seat have completely, um, you know, unusable. This one does not. So that's, that's really nice. I like that. Getting back inside, the cab Defender has the opening front windshield. So does Polaris. It's very nice. Um, works pretty much, uh, you know, to the same way that the, the Defender one does. However, the closing mechanism on this uh, progressively tightens as you, as you twist this lever over. It really tightens the front windshield down. And that was one thing on the Defender that we found as a complaint is that the lever was really loose in it and it was kind of rattly. It didn't, didn't really feel all that nice. Um, moving forwards, some of the stuff in here that I find really smart. Obviously it's got tilt and telescope or tilt steering, not telescopic tilt. So one thing that I've always wondered about these vehicles that have heat and AC is why not put a big old rubber knurled adjuster on it? Because when you're in here, you're probably wearing leather ranch gloves or gloves like I just had on or something because you're working. This is a utility vehicle. So put something on here. You can grab and get a good hold of these have a rubber. It's like a removable rubber ring on here and you can grab them. They feel solid. They're sturdy, really nice fit or really nice fitting, really nice feel. And, and they work really good. This is just smart little stuff. Add to that, this guy right here, this is a charge port. Polaris ships this with a cable that you can plug in and maintain your battery right from the factory. That's just, that's just built in. So if you're leaving your rig outside and it's cold and it's winter or it's spring and fall, whatever it is, or you're just Say you're going on vacation for a month or two and you don't want the battery to, you know, be dead if you, for whatever reason, plug it in and everything's right there to maintain your battery. Really smart. I like that. It's got two 12 volt outlets down here, room for more. It's got all kinds of areas. Like you can drop a bottle of water here. There's a water bottle holder here. There's one here. There's, you know, space up top for cup holders. All the vents in here are really nice. They're rotating, um, you know, they spin, they do exactly what they're supposed to for putting heat where you want it. You got a big glove box on the lower. It fits quite a bit. You got one up top. And <clears throat> I kind of like that this glove box is built in and isn't removable. Um, the Can-Am has that removable one up top. And I, I don't, I just, I just think this is a cleaner, more functional dash space, but there is a ton of storage space inside of this thing. On top of that, you got your huge mirror. And then up top, you'll notice, um, well, you, you have your interior uh, cab lights up here. It's made by Honeywell. It has to be on for it to work, so it's not gonna drain your battery, but that's kind of cool. So you do have, but the stereo in this thing is really big. It's an MB Quart and it's built right into the ride command, which is super cool. So everything's inside ride command. It's got four, six and a half inch speakers up top. Then it also under my seat that I'm sitting in right now, the passenger seat has a 250 watt separately powered subwoofer. So you can pump the beats inside of this thing. If you want it loud, you can make it loud. It gets loud in here. Um, I already mentioned it's got power windows, which is really cool. 
And then on top of that, you have your, you know, your traditional uh, performance standard and work mode. That's just your selectable throttle controls. So it limits your top speeds, limits how jumpy the throttle input is. Um, you know, you put it in performance and it gives you everything that you, that you want exactly how your foot's touching the throttle. You put it in standard mode and it, it kind of smooths those out. You put it in work mode and it really smooths it out. So you can be jumpy on the throttle if you're bouncing through stuff and, you know, it's not jumping the vehicle around. It comes with factory EPS, obviously. Um, the shifter on it is really solidly, same as the last generation, but it's, yes it is. So the passenger seat flips up and you have a little storage compartment under here. There's really not a whole lot. Typically right here, there is a large area for a, a big drop in tote that you can take out. That's very similar to the, the Can-Am uh, Defender. Um, but this one has a huge, huge subwoofer. So really big sound in this one. You can you can pull this out. If it wasn't your, your cup of tea and you didn't want that, you could take it out and you could put a separate, uh, you know, your storage, uh, bin in there or whatever if you want but the way that these seats tilt too they're they're just they're they're so picking nice everything fits so good in this thing um down underneath there's even lower little storage part compartments under here and then you've got your heater vents way down low for your feet which is kind of nice uh more cup holders this thing's just feature packed but let's turn on the turn on the ride command here um you can jump in and have a look if you want and we'll walk you through some of this stuff we'll turn the turn the heat off it's very similar to uh, very similar to a pickup truck where it gives you a little you know a little rundown of Polaris. It shows a video at the start, which is cool. It gives you your outdoor temperature, time obviously, and your fuel mileage. So some of the cool stuff. This is this is very similar to the snowmobiles and as well to the Razor. It gives you your elevation, your voltage, your heading, um, you know miles per hour, engine temp, all that stuff on the main page. It tells you whether you're in uh, turf mode two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, tells you what gear you're in, all that kind of cool stuff. And you can go into the menu of this, and if you want to change your gauges, uh, or sorry, you can go into the uh, all the settings, and you can go through <clears throat> and change all kinds of settings. Whatever you want, whatever information you want up front, you can get off of this thing. It'll give you your VIN number and, you know, uh, how long until the next service, um, the engine hours, all just everything. You know, it even tells you your oil, your oil life based on mileage, I believe. I don't think it actually has an oil... Um, you know sensor but just based on mileage you can go through and you know change your time zones do whatever you need to do change your speed all that system information really handy here's that plow feature i was telling you about so when you go into plow you set it up under auto vehicle must be in park to initiate so when you set it up you hit auto and then it makes you set your winch and you slide to adjust your winch you can hear it and then you can have back drag mode as well, but you set up your winch to where you want it to go to. And then when you shift between forwards and, uh, and reverse or low and reverse, it will automatically bring your winch up and, and do the whole, the whole setup for you, which is pretty cool. So I think that's pretty neat. Obviously you can hook your phone up to this thing with Bluetooth. You can check out your cameras. Camera's really easy to change between rear and front. Not hard there at all. Works really good. And it does, when you put it into reverse, um, it'll automatically go into the reverse cam just like your pickup truck would do so pretty cool there now if we want to check out gps gives us everything we want to know the gps system is really intuitive shows all the lakes rivers um, everything you can imagine shows you where gas stations are um, the whole nine yards so you know it, it it's very detailed road names the whole bit it's pretty cool setup and polaris has worked with some really good mapping companies to make this thing do exactly what it's supposed to do um, Obviously Bluetooth, like I was talking about, and then your music. You can bring it in, you can check your sources, do whatever you want. There's even a weather radio thing, so you can tune into the, the weather channels and whatnot. Obviously Bluetooth. There is a uh, uh, USB charger in the glove box, so you can plug your phone in there, but everybody seems to use Bluetooth nowadays. So pretty cool stuff. All kinds of options. Um, you know, you can shift through whatever you want. It's it's a pretty smart setup, and this is this is not needed. You don't need this. But let me tell you, it is, it's very cool to have. It works really good. And after you've had this, the problem is you get spoiled and you want it again. Um, it's just giving you all the information, right heads up. It uses everything inside the vehicle. It knows the winch. It knows, um, you know, all the controls, everything that's going on. It's, it's a really, it's a really smart setup. I really like the way this thing works. This is the Ranger refined as far as, as I can even imagine they possibly can. I mean, the only thing possibly that you could do to this vehicle to maybe maybe take it next level is do something with, you know, with the shocks where 
maybe like dynamics where you can pump it up so that it, you know, it either automatically recognizes the load and, and pumps the suspension up or whatever. I mean, I guess that could be the next step that they could do, but truly with a utility vehicle, I don't think that that's necessarily something that you have to have. I just don't, I, I don't know where they're going to take it from here because they've completely outdone themselves. The quality control, the fit and finish, the tight seams, These vehicles are just, they just drip premium everywhere. They look really cool. Again, Yes, it's really expensive. It's not a cheap side-by-side, -side, but it's not meant to be. It's meant to be the best of the best, all the features possible. It's meant to be your King Ranch, your High Country, your Denali, whatever you want. That's what this is. And if you want the ultimate utility, premium featured, most comfortable and thoughtful, I would say, side-by-side -side going, I think a Ranger XP 1000 North Star Ultimate, it's the only way to go. This thing, this thing is the top of the top and you can take that to the bank because it's cashable. If you've enjoyed this segment, make sure you hit the like button and also comment down below because we love hearing from our fans and we try to reply as much as possible. And also make sure you subscribe because here at Dirt Tracks, we've always got cool stuff coming your way.